we have a solid uniform insulator with a charge positive Q. And the charge is uniformly distributed throughout. The radius of it is equal to lowercase a. And the question is, determine the electric field everywhere. So we have a sphere, a solid uh, uniform sphere insulator charge uniformly distributed throughout. We are going to figure out the electric field, determine the electric field everywhere. We are going to use what, Hillary? Ah, we're trying to figure out the electric field everywhere around this insulated sphere. <laughs> Please, Michael, I'm just trying to help you. Sierra. We are going to use Gauss's law, Gary Gauss's law. Uh, the closed loop integral of E times Ds or Dx over uh, the U in circle. No, no, equals. U. Okay, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you're combining, you're confusing two different, Ampere's Law and Gauss's Law. Right. Is it with DA? It is with a DA. It's the closed surface integral, E dot DA. No. No. I, Mr. P, help out. No, that would be Ampere's law again. Um, Travis, help now. Uh, Q in over E now. Q in charge inside what, Red Inside the And this whole thing, John, is equal to? On the left? What is this by definition? Zero. No, that would be uh, that would be if it were um, Gauss's law in magnetic fields, but <coughs> what is this whole thing called? Dorf said it will help you out, she'll give us a symbol. Oh, it's a capital P. 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 Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface. You love your Gaussian surfaces. Draw your Gaussian surface. There it is. Our Gaussian surface has a radius r. Our Gaussian surface in this particular case is a sphere, a concentric sphere. Uh, we know the electric field looks like this throughout. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We're going to start out with r greater than a. So our first Gaussian surface is this one right here, where r is greater than than A. So we have then our electric field looks like this throughout. Always oriented straight outward. Oops. Uh, let's see. Work our way through this if R is greater than A, please. Nick. So you have closed surface integral of E D A cosine. Let's ignore the left side for a little while. I'm sorry, the right side, work on the left side. And then um, theta would be zero. So you have How do you know theta is zero? Because we like drew our Gaussian surface like that. Such that what's the direction of the area vector? Out. Out, and so is the electric field. So the electric field and the area vector are both out there for the angle is equal to zero. Keep going. Uh, so then the closed surface integral of dA, Loki, is? Um, 4 pi r squared. 
I'm going to put the area of the Gaussian surface first, but yes, the, it is definitely the, it's equal to 4 pi r squared, the air, surface area of the circle charge inside over E naught charge inside divided by E naught charge inside divided by E naught. Okay, so we have the electric field is equal to Q in over 4 pi r squared E naught. Finish it for me, please. Type. Um, you can pull out 4 pi E naught, that's your K constant. 4 pi E naught equals the K constant? One over four pi e naught equals Boltzmann's constant. Therefore, this is equal to KQ divided by uh, R squared, where Q is the capital Q, the total charge, which is the charge inside. And you should know this because it acts like a point particle. Now we're going to do it for R, which is less than A. We again draw our Gaussian surface. We start with Gauss's law, E dot dA is equal to charge on the inside divided by E. Yes, Mark? Um, on the AP test, yes. would you just say that it acts like a point charge and move on? Or would great you great question. Two, two things. One, if they don't ask you to derive it, definitely say acts like a point charge, there's your equation. If they ask you to derive it, you got to do this. Okay. Okay. So, uh, you'll, you'll see there are various examples of that. They say use Gauss's law to figure out blank, or they just say what is. Right? And you, part of what you should be doing when you're going through the old AP tests is being able to identify when you need to um, do derivation and when you don't. It should be pretty obvious, but sometimes as students we tend to make things harder than they are. Okay, so we have now R is less than little a. Red stop, what do we do next? Still theta is zero. And the E is still constant, so you can pull it out. Integral of dA equals Qn over E naught. So then you have E integral of dA, which is just the area of the Gaussian surface. Except Qn isn't Q anymore because you're. Qn, notice, it's an important thing to realize because R is like big Q anymore. Well, let's just finish with the area of Gaussian surface. 4 pi r squared. So notice the left hand side of the equation is identical. It's the right hand side where we have issues. Charge inside the Gaussian surface, please. Eric, how do we deal with that? We use a surface charge density. Equal, yeah, equals Q over A. No, not a metric. Polymetric charge density. You'll notice that the, the reason we're not going to end up doing that is because this is actually a volumetric object. The charge is distributed throughout, so it's actually something where we're talking about volumetric charge density. So we do use <coughs> volumetric charge density equals charge over the total volume. So this is big Q over the total volume. Keep working with that, please. Um, Travis? Um, which is equal to Q in over the volume of that, which would be uh, 4 thirds pi r cubed. I'm going to put the Gaussian surface, just the volume of the Gaussian surface, but yes. So we have, uh, just to work our way through it, the charge on the inside equals the volume of the Gaussian surface multiplied by big Q divided by the volume total. Volume of the Gaussian surface, as you said, is 4 thirds pi r cubed times big Q. What is the volume total then, Yuchin? Um, volume total we need for the whole piece. Um, four thirds big, pi big R. Actually, in this particular case, we didn't use big R. I defined it as little a, just for a variety of sake. So then we have four thirds and pi all cancel out. We get the charge on the inside is equal to R cubed times big Q divided by little a cubed. Therefore, we come back over here. We get R cubed times big Q over uh, E naught times A cubed. Ooh. Let's do it again. 
People, I got a minute and a half here. Thank you. Uh, let's see. The electric field then is equal to uh, R Q divided by 4 pi E naught times A cubed, or if you prefer K R K times Q over A cubed times R. Notice K, big Q, and A cubed are all constants, so the graph of the electric field as a function of position, then this is actually a linear... Teachers and students, please pardon the interruption. Freshman girls soccer practice has been canceled. Also, JV girls tennis practice is canceled. Students, please wait for the bell to be released. Thank you. Notice that we have a linear relationship from zero to uh, A, and then after we get outside of it, it falls off as K Q over R squared. Bam. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, people have a beautiful day.